Greetings. I'm Raining Moon and this is Oak Moon Grove. In today's video, I want to share a bit with you about the oak tree and um, tree medicine as well as how to forage acorns for food. Now the trees, they gift us with a lot, including the very air that we breathe. And this is a little tiny oak tree, a white oak. It's one of my favorite types of oaks. Uh, it's currently the end of September and the oak trees are dropping their acorns everywhere. I can hear them thunking on the roof of the little cottage. And so that's what really inspired me to make this video and share with you how to use the, uh, the medicine of the tree, the food uh, that comes from the tree through its acorns, how to prepare it. Because you can't just pick up acorns from the ground and eat them. I mean, you could try, but you would probably get sick from the tannic acid in the acorns. So there is uh, ways to prepare it, but once you do, it's an amazing food. It's delicious. It has a lot of good fats for you. It's very high in protein. And remember too that you are sharing this food with the other animals. Lots of wildlife uses the acorns for food, mammals, birds, insects. So remember that you are sharing and you are part of the circle of life. I highly recommend if you're going to forage anything from the wild that you watch my video on foraging guidelines and I'll link that below. But a little bit about the oak. So the oak for a long time has been seen as a symbol of courage and strength and determination. And this is a great tree that if you want to sit by the base of an oak tree to really ground and connect with earth energy for guidance. Now this is a, a slow growing tree. Uh, some oaks are said to live a thousand years. Uh, it's considered to be the king of trees. Um, connected with uh, the green man and Hearn the Hunter, and as well as Thor from the Norse Pantheon. Uh, it's been used for a very long time for making furniture and used in housing uh, because the wood is hardwood. It's extremely hard and durable. Uh, this is also why it's linked with strength. Uh, preferably, a lot of the wood was used in doorways because of that. Now, in the springtime, in April, you can actually make a de decoction from the bark of the white oak and cook that down and use that for congestion. You can use it to treat gallbladder inf infections and inflammation and to even help with varicose veins. I got, like I said before, the acorns are a really rich source of food for many, many animals. You can grind them and fry them. You can make them into flour for bread. And just remember that you're sharing. This year I am harvesting some of the acorns because there is truly an abundance of acorns just falling out of the trees right now. But last year there wasn't that many acorns falling down, so I didn't take um, any, I didn't forge any acorns last year. So just keep that in mind that you are sharing. Make sure there's enough for the squirrels and the chipmunks that are around you. And I'm going to pick up some of the acorns that, uh, from the bigger trees that are around me. And I'm going to bring you inside and share with you how to prepare them. Hello again. So I have foraged this um, dish full, this bowl full of white oak acorns. This is what they look like. And everything in its own time. Like I said, we're coming to the end of September while I'm filming this and they are ready to come down. So there are so many different species of oaks. There's red oaks, willow oaks, pin oaks, uh, black oaks, scrub oaks, all different kinds of oaks. And each of them is going to require a different amount of cooking. I like the 
the white oaks in particular. Um, to me, these taste the best and they don't need that much. Uh, I'm going to try to adjust the camera here. Um, they don't really require uh, that much cooking because you're going to have to boil these. Like I said before, um, with the oaks, uh, haha, okay, a little technical difficulty, but I think the camera hopefully is going to stay here. Um, the white oaks seem to take the least amount of prep time in order to get the tannins out. Um, the tannins, if you eat the acorns straight up like this, uh, they'll cause you to get an upset stomach. Um, tannins can be harsh on our stomach, even though other animals can manage to eat them. We have to do some preparation for it. The tannic acid is water soluble, which helps for it. So when you pick your acorns, you're going to try to make sure that whichever acorns that you end up picking um, they look nice and healthy and they're not blotchy. They don't look like they have any kind of fungus on them. Make sure you try to pick ones that don't have any kinds of holes in them because a lot of other animals like to eat these, including insects. And you don't really want to crack one of these open and find a big worm or grub in there. So how you can figure out which ones are uh, that they don't have insects and they're ready to go to prepare for food. You just take um, a bunch of acorns and you put a bowl of water and you put these in there and if they sink to the bottom, they're good to go. Uh, if they're floating up, they might have holes in them from insects where air is. And so you don't want to eat those, just put them back where you found them. Uh, but that's an easy way to sort out without cracking it open, wasting it, and then finding out that there's an insect inside. Um, you're going to pull off. There's usually a little cap on top. Uh, if the acorn is green, that's okay too. Actually, it's more likely that they won't have insects in them if they are green. I've eaten plenty of green acorns, and that's okay too. The longer they are sitting out there, uh, the more chance for them to have insects grow into them and be eating them on the inside. So, uh, once you figured out which acorns, you've done the float test, you figured out which ones are good to go, that they don't have insects on them, uh, you are going to crack open the shell. Let me try to do this one-handed. I have just like a, a rock over here. Kind of did that a little too much, but so you get the idea. This one's cracked open. And then you're going to remove this piece, the, uh, the fleshy bit, from the shell. Now you can see there is a little bit of skin on there. You want to get that skin off. Um, that'll really help with the acorn. This is the, the fleshy acorn. Uh, it's pretty soft right now. So for the skin, you can use your nail and just scrape that off. You can use an, a knife or a butter knife if you want. Just make sure you skin that off. And in the meantime, to save time, you can um, boil some water, start boiling some water uh, while you are peeling, you know, cracking open the acorns and peeling the skin off and setting them aside. Uh, they kind of feel like peanuts before they're roasted, kind of soft like that. They have a nice texture. They have a really good taste, kind of like filbert nuts a little bit, in my opinion. Very tasty and soft. So you are going to do all of that. Boil the water first. Do not throw the acorns in cold water and then start to boil them because you're going to lock in the tannic acid. So you don't want to do that. You need to boil the water first. Then once these are all cracked open and you've taken the meat out and you have gotten the skin off, dice them up because if they're diced a little smaller, they're going to cook faster. And then you're going to throw them into the water for about five minutes. Uh, you might have to change the water a few times depending on the species of oak that you are using. That's why I like the white oak because it seems to be kind of a, a no fuss, easier acorn to cook. Uh, but it's whatever is around you, 
so if once you cook them, if they have a slightly bitter taste, then you are good to go. If they're very bitter, you need to change the water, boil the water again, and cook them over again. Remember not to put not to put just cold water. Remove them from the pot, heat up the water, then throw them in again, and then change the water. So the water uh, can be used as an astringent because it has the tannic acid in that. So you can use that on blisters, you can use it on sunburns, on poison ivy, you can use it as a mouthwash, and it'll last refrigerated for about a week. Uh, that you can use that as, as an astringent. Like the Native Americans, uh, they didn't necessarily boil the acorns. Instead, they would collect a whole batch and then they would do cold water baths for two to six weeks by putting them in a, a net and then sitting them in a stream for two to six weeks. But since I really don't feel like waiting that long for the prep for these, um, you can just boil them like I'm doing. They can also be stored um, if you dry them out in the sun or you can smoke them to dry them out. If you smoke them, they can last for years as food. And how I really like to use acorns and how I intend to use this uh, as a stuffing inside of acorn squash because it's fall time and there's a lot of squash coming out. This is the squash season. And so they're really good with squash. Uh, you can put them in like a vegetable stew and you can ground them in uh, into flour in a matate to make uh, acorn cakes. So I hope that you enjoyed this video on acorns and the oak tree. I feel that when we pick forage our own food, it really connects us on a deeper level with nature and we can really sense the abundance and the love that comes from our mother earth. Um, much more so than when you buy food at a grocery store. I feel this is a, a really great way to connect. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, I ask you to give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my channel. If you give it a try, let me know, uh, write to me in the comments and let me know how you uh, decided to cook this up and eat it. Until next time, I wish you love, serenity, and grace. Namadie.